thanks for having a look at our vacation video, Trains, Baseball, and Jasper. It all started when I saw that Frontier Airlines was offering new flights to Philadelphia out of Cincinnati, and they were having some great specials for early June. So I looked at the Cub schedule to see if the Cubs would happen to be there in early June, and in fact they were. So we took our flight, took a train to the place that we were going to be staying, and this is it. It was an Airbnb that uh, was hosted by these two wonderful people, Sean and Gabrielle. But the real attraction was this cat, Jasper. Jasper comes with the house, and that's why we selected that Airbnb. The next morning, we made our way to the local train station and hopped on the SEPTA, the local Philadelphia uh, uh, train service, and made our way to the 30th place station. We started seeing some sights in the area, we made some new friends, and we also learned that the Pope likes Philly cheesesteak. Then we went to the Chemical Heritage Foundation Museum, which was really interesting. It had a lot of exhibits about the history of chemistry. Next up, we made our way to the Benjamin Franklin Museum, where we saw some very interesting exhibits about the man and his life. Then back to the 30th Street Station, where we boarded another train heading towards the sports area in Philadelphia, which has the home of the Philadelphia Flyers hockey team, the Philadelphia Eagles football team, and the place we were heading, the Citizens Bank Park, where the Philadelphia Phillies play. It was a beautiful night for a ball game and we had terrific seats. In fact, I was able to walk up close to the field and get an autograph from Albert Almora Jr., a Cubs player who had just been called up for the minors. In fact, this was his first day in the major leagues. Kyle Hendricks was the starting pitcher for the Cubs and we enjoyed watching the game. There was a wide array of food available and we had our first Philly cheesesteak. There was, of course, the Philly fanatic along with some friends. The Cubs played a pretty good game, but in the end, they did fall to the Phillies 3-2. We made our way back on the train, and Jasper was happy to see us. The next morning, we hopped back on the train, and it was time to see some historical sites, including the Liberty Bell. Next was Independence Hall, which was actually built as a city hall for Philadelphia, but became much more. Our first stop was the Supreme Court Room, which actually housed the U.S. Supreme Court from 1791 to 1800. After that, we moved next door to the Meeting Room, which was the place where the Second Continental Congress took place, and also was where the Declaration of Independence was approved. From there, it was back on the train and heading back to the Phillies ballpark, where it was cloudy and cold and a little bit rainy for the first couple innings, but turned out to be a great day for the Cubs. The Phillies just didn't know how to handle the Cubs hitters. Cubs bullpen was able to rest most of the day thanks to a great start by Cubs pitcher John Lackey. Here's a look at the highlights from that day's game. Cubs looking to make it two of three in Philadelphia. Albert Almora Jr. making his first major league start. He would start in left field and help John Lackey in the first. That's Freddie Galvis flying out to left and look at the throw from Almora Jr. to gun down Adubel Herrera double play. Brett Oberholzer replaced Vince Velasquez in the first inning. Velasquez leaving with right bicep soreness. How about Javier Baez? The base hit to put the Cubs up one to nothing. Top six still one nothing. Chris Bryant takes Andrew Bailey deep. His 14th of the year is a two run shot. It was three to nothing. Two batters later it's Ben Zobris going deep to center. Solo shot four to nothing. Back to Lackey in the seventh. He strikes out Michael Franco. And then he gets Ryan Howard, who can't hold up. Eighth strikeout for Lackey, 16th straight batter that he retired. And then in the eighth, a 5 to nothing game, Almora Jr. comes through with his first major league hit. It drives in a run as the Cubs go on to win this one 8-1. to one. Another train ride back home where Jasper seemed to be happy to see us. The next morning, we went to the 30th place station where we hopped on the Amtrak and made our way to New York City.
we arrived at Times Square and just took some time to explore. They say the neon lights are bright on Broadway. On Broadway. They say there's always magic in the air. We decided to have lunch at the Hard Rock Cafe in Times Square where we saw some great sights including a Paul McCartney autographed guitar, a guitar from Elvis Presley, a boa once worn by Janis Joplin, the lyrics to Help handwritten by John Lennon, Jack Bruce's guitar, Bill Wyman's guitar, an outfit worn by Elton John, one of Bill Clinton's saxophones, shoes that had belonged to Prince, the Mask from The Wall by Pink Floyd, Pete Townsend's guitar, Bo Diddley's guitar, handwritten lyrics from Jimi Hendrix for the song Midnight Lightning, Billy Joel's motorcycle, the original doors to Abbey Road, and then we were invited up to the balcony. And this was exciting because this is an historic site. This is originally the Paramount Theater, which was the place where Elvis Presley's first movie, Love Me Tender, was premiered. And in fact, here's some video from that premiere back in 1956. Love Me Tender is released on November 16th, premiering in New York City. 3,000 teenagers scream as a 40-foot high statue of Elvis is unveiled. Elvis's transformation into a movie star is complete. Love me tender. Love Critics pan the film, but it makes back its million dollar production cost within days. Next, we hopped back on the train and made our way to the southern tip of Manhattan. We saw the World Trade Center building, stopped at the World Trade Center Memorial, and then caught our first glimpse of the Statue of Liberty. We rode on the ferry that took us over to the Statue of Liberty and had some very great sights along the way. In this photo, I am holding a picture of the tombstone of my great-grandmother. Seated in front of the tombstone is my grandfather, and the other two gentlemen are his brothers. This was taken just before they left Russia to come to the United States. In this picture, I'm holding a photo of my father and his two siblings. My father is the one sitting on the far right, and then there's my Aunt Gert and my Uncle Lester. I had to get a photo of myself giving the peace sign in front of the Statue of Liberty, just as John Lennon had done decades before. Next, we got back on the ferry and headed over to Ellis Island. The ferry returned to port, and then we hopped on the train and traveled north to get to the Bronx. Next, we arrived at Yankee Stadium. Our seats were way up in the nosebleed section, but that was okay. We had a good time, and I was able to find the Big Apple. The game was between the Angels and the Yankees, but I went to explore the Yankees Museum where I found some great artifacts from Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Mickey Mantle, and Roger Maris. Also, there was a statue of Yogi Berra. 
Here is a 1939 World Series ring. And here's me saying, I wish the Cubs could just get one of these. And maybe one of these, too. Of course, George Steinbrenner. The Yankees broadcast team. And it was an exciting game. We got to see former Cubs Starlin Castro learn some manners in Dutch. We saw a promposal and just enjoyed ourselves at Yankee Stadium, though I do fear that it may have, may have turned Alex into a Yankees fan. In the end, the Yankees won 6-3. Then it was back to the Amtrak station, and I caught this great video of the Amtrak pulling out of the station. It was only later I realized that by taking the video, I didn't make it onto the train. We returned home to Jasper. The next morning we got up and we had bagels and genuine Philadelphia cream cheese courtesy of our Airbnb host. And that's one of the great things about traveling is you can have this local cuisine that you just can't get anywhere else. Next we hopped a train from the New Jersey Transit Authority and we made our way to Atlantic City. One of the things about train travel is you really get a sense of how many wrecked cars there are in the world. Here is the Delaware River. When the sun beats down and burns the tar up all the and finally we arrived in Atlantic City. Of course, this is where the names from the Monopoly board came from. Here's Park Place, although it looked like there was no free parking at all. And eventually we made our way to the beach. From the park you hear the happy sound of a carousel. Mm, you can almost taste the hot dogs and fish fries they sell. Down by the sea, yeah. On a blanket with my baby. After our day in Atlantic City, it was time to hop back on the train and make our way back to Philadelphia. The following morning, it was time to go back. We had a relaxing breakfast with Jasper, and we had to resist his attempts to come back with us. And I'm glad to say that our trip back home was completely uneventful.